Welcome to Sonoran Miniatures. Today I'm finishing up all of the detailed work on my Space Marine Intercessors for the Red Scorpions chapter. To start off, I am applying Gnome Oil Wash. However, I'm doing something a little different this time. Normally when the wash is applied to the entire model, it will lightly darken everything and seep into the recesses. This time, however, I'm only applying the wash to the recesses to prevent the model from becoming too dark. With the deeper recesses, I loaded the brush with wash and just simply dabbed them. I needed to be careful when handling the model afterwards since I can smear the Nolan oil and ruin the model. shot after the null oil has been applied. With all the small leather pouches, I'm doing a simple base coat, dry brush, and wash method. First I base with Doombowl Brown, then dry brush with Kislev Flush, and then a wash with null oil. the helmet I'm trying something new. I'm putting down a single base coat of Gehenna's Gold then painting over with Spirit Stone Red. I made sure to start at the front of the eye and pull the brush backwards to give variation in the color of the eyes. For the sergeant said, I'm starting out with a couple of thin coats of Kislev Flesh. Next I am generously applying Reichland Flesh Shape. I want the recesses to fill, but I also want to darken up the base coat. I 
I am now using Doom Bold Brown for the hair, with just two thin layers. I am now coming back and dry brushing everything including the hair with Kislev Flush. With the previous shade that I added, I'm going to find a happy medium between the light and dark colors of paint, and the dry brushing of the hair will give it some dimension rather than just a static brown color. And now for the fun part, the eyes. I'm starting off with a very thinned down coat of white scar, then I sharpened the end of a toothpick and dipped it in a battened black. I started with one eye, then matched the angle for the second eye. This honestly took about five times to accomplish, which is why I used a very thin coat of white scar. For the base, I am putting down one coat of Tau Light Ochre. This will provide a colored background for the terrain paint I will add later. Next I'm using some PVA glue and applying some small bushes in random locations. Once the glue is dried, I'm using my texture brush and liberally applying acrylic and earth. This will end up looking like dried mud, so I'm not worried about putting too much onto the base. However, if I want to achieve a clean look, I need to make sure I wipe off any that gets onto the edge of the base. Now that the Agrellin Earth has dried completely, I am dry brushing with Tau Light Ochre to highlight the raised edges. Next I am bringing back the darker color with Seraphim Sepia. The Seraphim Sepia will pull onto the flat spots and seep into the cracks giving color variation. You can see the color difference in the comparison shot after the Seraphim Sepia has dried. To clean up the base, I am now adding two or three very thin coats of Mabadden Black. The paint is thinned down to an almost water-like consistency to prevent brush strokes on the final product. I wanted to add some dusting effects onto this model which I've never done before. Using the applicator tip I am lightly applying Tamiya mud powder onto the boots and partially up the legs. Then I am coming back with the brush side to blend the color in. Next I'm going to do the same process with Tamiya Sand. 
but with a little bit of a lighter touch. I only want to lighten up the color a little bit. Onto the water slide decals. First off, I'm working with three very different brands. The first is Fallout Hobbies and their decals are top notch. The decals adhere very well to curves and don't tear. The Fallout Hobbies decals need very little to no micro set to mold into shape. The second set is from Games Workshop which do fairly well and can be very forgiving to people new to decals. They are thicker and can be cut when wet without tearing but definitely need micro set to conform to curves. And lastly, the Red Scorpion decals come from eBay, and these are the only ones I've managed to find so far. They can be very brittle and can tear easily. If you buy decals from eBay, I recommend testing some out before you commit to putting them on your model. Once I've gotten these cut, I soak them in water to remove the paper backing. I then prepare the surface with Microset. Next, I remove the decals from the water and gently dry them on a paper towel. Using a clean brush, I pick up the decals and place them on the model. I then add more microset to the top of the decal. This lets you move it around and begins to soften the decal which helps it conform and adhere to the shape of the model. Once the decal is softened and in the correct position, take a wad of paper towels and press the decal to the model firmly. After this, I then repeat the process with a damp paper towel to clean off any residual microset. A note of caution, the Fallout Hobbies decals soften very quickly I ended up not using microset with them. I just used water to move them into position. attached is now time to seal them. With a one-to-one -one mix of art coat and Lamian medium, I am applying two to three thin coats. But before I did this, I wanted to make sure all of the microset has either dried or has been cleaned off with a paper towel. Microset and art coat don't mix well, and residual microset will make the art coat clumpy and white, ruining your decal. After I've sealed the decals, I seal the whole model with a matte clear coat spray. I do one to two coats depending on how the model looks. This will make the model uniform looking since art coat is shiny when dry. And here's the final product. These are a lot of fun to paint and I really like the color scheme for the red scorpions. So you can probably expect to see more content with them. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and remember, keep your brushes clean.